Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue going through our conveyor exercises. In this video, we're going to be using Industrial Concepts Conveyor Trainer, and we're going to be using our Compact Logics Trainer. And I'll put links to both of those in the description. So just to recap where we're at, in our last video, we made it where if we switch switch three to the left, it's going to be hand. And if we switch switch three to the right, and when we put a part in, it's going to start up and it's going to sort the part. And if it doesn't see any more parts, it's going to stop. And if we put another part in, it would do it again. But we still got a little bit more we can do with this conveyor trainer because, all right, we're ejecting parts and we know if they're shiny or if they're black. Well, we can also keep track of how many we've done. So that's what we're going to add in this video is we are going to add a counter to count both the shiny parts and the black parts. So let's go into our program here. And one, we could actually add these counters right here because we already have a timer here. And you know, here's the other one. So this is the black pusher solenoid. Here's the shiny pusher solenoid. We could put a counter right here. But one, we don't want our program to get too bloated. And you know, that it's a fine line to tighten whether to add more rungs or add code to existing rungs. But in this case, I'm gonna make just a separate area down here. Actually, I could use a separate subroutine. Let's, let's do that. Just in case y'all thought our videos were scripted, now you know they're not. We're gonna actually go over here and we're gonna right click our main program and we're gonna add a new routine. And this is going to be part count. And this will be a ladder diagram. So we'll add that. And then if you remember from our basic start stop video on this, we need a JSR to get there. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's add another rung. And in this case, it's just gonna be an unconditional JSR. And one thing, you know, you don't actually have to go left and right in these. A lot of times, I'll just drag down anything. And then I can just highlight the symbol and hit enter. And there, you're gonna get all the options. And if you know the specific thing, like in this case, a JSR is what I said, let's just type JSR, that's gonna be a jump subroutine. And in this case, we're gonna to jump to routine name part count. And we're not gonna use any input parameters on this, so we are just going to remove our instruction parameters. And there we go. So let's put that in there. And then let's go down to our part count. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to examine on, and anytime that I see this ejector go out, I want to count the part. So that is going to be local colon one colon o dot data dot one. So that's our shiny pusher solenoid. And then we're going to bring down a CTU count up counter. And this will be shiny parts. So we'll need to create that. And we're not even gonna worry about a preset right now. So now we're gonna do the same thing for our black pusher solenoid. Now we could create that whole thing again, or we could right click or hit control C, and then right click again and, or hit control V. It's gonna give us a second copy of this. Also, I just noticed, that's pulled shiny wrong. So before somebody else points that out, I'm going to show you how you can rename a tag. So we're going to right click that and we're going to go to edit shiny parts properties. And right there it is with its E in it that doesn't need to be there. So we're going to change that. There we go. Now it is corrected. So in this case on our second rung, this one we want the black solenoid, which is local colon one colon O dot data dot two. And then instead of doing shiny parts, we want to count black parts. Okay, and one thing you notice, this rung looks good. This rung has a red X in it. And that's because I haven't created this yet. So there's just real quick, if you see something like this in your rung, then there's something wrong somewhere in here. And I guess we haven't really gone through that lately. Let's say we couldn't figure this out. We can hit the verify routine up here. And I keep mine drugged down here, but if you drag this up, there's our errors. And it says rung one, CTU, operand, reference tag is undefined. And if you have an undefined tag, that means it needs created. 
So we'll just get that back out of the way. We're going to right click here and we're going to have new black parts and it will be a counter data type. And let's go ahead and assemble that. All right, so one, you notice our done bits are already set on these counters and that's because these counters preset is zero and that's because the count and that's because the counter presets are zero and the done bit on a CTU will be true when the accumulated value is greater than or equal to its preset. And it doesn't matter if it's zero or not, right now it is greater than or equal to it. But if we went here and we just threw a one in, then you'll see the done bit goes off. But really, right now I just want a zero in it because really we just want to count parts. So I'm going to drop a shiny piece in. All right, and we have a value of one now. I can drop a black piece in. And now we have one in our black part. So let's say we only want four of any part and then the operator, he needs to hit the green button. Because we're not using the green button now, because remember we took it out and put the switch three in to control our conveyor. So yeah, let's do that. So first our preset value, I said four. We're gonna put our preset of both of our counters now at a value of four. And let's just see what happens when we get to four, just so we understand. And we'll just focus on the shiny one here. So I'm gonna drop another one in. So go ahead and drop another one. We got two, there's three. And watch it when four goes. There you go, now we have a done bet. So if our shiny parts counter is done, then we wanna stop our conveyor. And same with the black parts counter. If either of those are done, then we shouldn't run. But we only want this to work in auto mode because we still wanna be able to switch up to hand at any time and it runs. So let's go back to our main routine and let's find where we're controlling our conveyor. Do you guys remember that? Should I give you a second? You want to hit the pause button? Just, yeah, this is kind of a good thing. Let's, let's say we couldn't find that. Let's say instead of five rungs, this was 500 rungs long. How would we go about finding our conveyor? We know our conveyor is an output. And okay, we can, we can see we got a bunch of wires over there on our outputs. What we can do is we can go to our controller tags here. And then let's go down one local colon one colon I is an input. We want local colon one colon O and that's an output. And then we could open this on up and right there is our conveyor motor. So where is it controlled? If we right click it, you have two options actually that you could find this with. Is first we have the find all button and that works okay, but I'm a bigger fan of using the cross reference here. And so what this is going to do is going to bring up every place that this particular output is used. And actually, this isn't a great example because it's only one place. But then what I look at is this destructive column. And what that means is that this particular location can control that output, or mainly can write a one or a zero into that output. So we'll double click there. And there we go. Now we're at our conveyor motor. And so we see here, here's our auto run. Now, earlier on, and we probably still have a few examples, we added our interlock that we wanted to stop it right beside of the output. Well, in this case, we only want to do it in auto mode. So we're just going to put them down in this branch. So we're going to edit this wrong, and we're going to go to our favorites tab, and we're going to go for an examine if off. And we're going to examine off shiny parts dot dn because we want to run as long as that done bit is not made or our accumulated value is not greater than or equal to our preset now let's highlight that and you can just hit Control c and then Control v that's going to put another one in but instead of the shiny parts we need now want the black parts so now that if we're full of shiny parts or we're full of black parts we want to stop so let's put that in and right away, okay, we can already see we have three conditions now that are preventing our conveyor from running. So we know how to fix this one, no part present one. We just got to drop a part in it, right? Because right below it, here is that timer. Five seconds and not seeing a part. So I'm going to throw a part in there. But it's not going to go anywhere because 
we're stopping on these two. So let's go check them out. And let's use the cross-reference to find them again. So right-click, and let's go to cross-reference. So now we see two locations, and we see that this one is destructive. And there we are. Our counters are done. So for now, let's put a zero into our accumulated value there. And then the moment we put this zero in here, you're going to see this run. All right, so there went one part. There's two parts. And I'm sorry, that was three parts. And here's the fourth one. And so the moment it saw the fourth one, it stopped. So the next thing is, okay, we got to get this thing back going. So the operator does whatever. Obviously, actually, here you go. There's only room for four parts. That's why we stopped at four. So the operator grabs his four parts. He's ready to go. He grabs these four parts, ready to go. Now we want to hit the green button to reset our counters. So we're going to add another rung right here, and we're going to use an examine on of local colon one colon i dot data dot eight. And that is our green button. And then we're going to find the reset instruction, which you can find several places. We're going to grab it right off the timer counter tab. And we're going to reset shiny parts. And we're going to reset the counter. So a lot of people will want to say, well, I want to reset the ACC because really that's all we care about. Let's reset the ACC. Well, when I go off this rung, you're going to see it stays red. And it's because in the case of these, you reset the entire counter structure. So let's hit the verify routine button so we can see that. And we'll drag our error tab back up. It says here, invalid data type, argument must match parameter data type, which can be a little vague if you don't know a lot about data types yet. But for now, let's make sure that mainly we know if it's a reset, Usually you're going to reset the entire structure. So if we just put in shiny parts and we go off of it, our red X is gone. Now we also want to reset our black parts. Typically we would bring down a branch and you would drag that in the middle of it. And then we would have another reset right here. And this is going to be of our black parts. But in Studio 5000's case, you don't actually have to do this branch here. You can put these in line and let's do it just so you know that you can because you will run into it and let's make sure it doesn't confuse you. So let's put this in. All right, so we're ready to go and we're gonna hit our green button and nothing's gonna happen. Now, why is nothing happening? Well, let's go find out. So do you remember how to use the cross-reference to find that output or do you remember where it is? Because yeah. It's a very short program. Whichever way though, either go to your controller tags and find that conveyor motor and cross-reference it, or just remember that it was in the main routine, it's rung zero. And we can look now and see, okay, the uh, thing that's holding us off now is this no part present. And so that's it, it's looking for a part. And there is no reason for the conveyor to start back up if there isn't a part. So we'll drop a part in now. Drop another part in. Oh, just to make sure we aren't get, using anything, we'll throw a black part in. We can throw another shiny part in. We can throw a black part in. Ooh, did anybody else just see a problem with my program? I did not catch that. I don't know if you caught that because the timing was so close on it but there's a problem with my program here so let's let's look at this close again so one all right one we're stopped now let's make sure we know why we're stopped and we see here we're stopped because there's no part present and our shiny parts is done and that's because we have four in here but there was a problem with my program and we gotta think actually honestly yeah i love learning opportunities honestly i have not anticipated this one so we're gonna fix this one together on the fly so I'm gonna hit the reset button, or I guess you call this our, hey, our conveyor parts trays are clear now. It's not gonna start yet because we don't have any parts in it. But all right, we'll drop a part. 
We're going to drop another part. And we're going to drop another part. Okay, now I'm going to drop this part right after this part. So I drop the black part, and right after it, I'm dropping the aluminum. And we're stuck here with this black part in the middle of our conveyor because we've hit our shiny part counter and it has stopped it. So I think that's a good place to stop this video. And yeah, I think next video we'll go through how to solve this. So I hope this video has been helpful. Again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.